Well, hello, my dears. I'm excited for today's video. I'm gonna let you in on the things that I've been collecting all year because I do collect all year for my Christmas decorating. It's something that I think you should always be looking for when you're pinning on Pinterest and then you should be collecting, um, you know, when you're at the thrift stores or you are at the antique stores. Just always kind of have your eyes open, even if it's something that isn't necessarily Christmassy, but maybe it's just red and white and it will work in Christmas. I think that's a good way to go too. So I have been collecting, I'm gonna share with you about 14 items that I have had on hand. And I just got off a podcast interview with Lisa from Farmhouse on Boone. And we, we were talking about Christmas decorating and she said that she specifically will refrain when she's out thrifting because she see, you know, she'll see something that's holiday um, inspired and she will purposely not get it because she doesn't think she knows how to store it or that she'll remember she even had it. And so I thought that was a really good point and I just want to throw this out how I do it. I have Rubbermaid totes, I have nine of them and could go more if I need to, but nine seems to be about right. And that ninth one, I leave at least half empty, if not all empty. And then as I'm shopping and finding, you know, one or two items on sale or, you know, at a garage sale or something, I will stick it in that ninth bin. And I just always know that I have that space. I don't even catalog it because I have like a whole inventory system to keep track of my seasonal decorating. But I don't even write it down. It just goes in the bin. And then I just know each year when it's time to do the decorating, I get to pull that bin out. And it's always kind of a fun surprise. Like, oh, I forgot, I forgot I had that. And I get to incorporate those new items into the current year. So we're gonna look at that. But before we do, I'm really excited about this collaboration I'm doing today um, with Krista Meeker. Have you guys heard of her? She's a YouTuber and fabulous on Instagram and TikTok. And she's just, a beautiful person and I'm I want to share with you her channel because I just I admire her so much I admire her design abilities and the quality of her DIY work and her photography and I'm just gonna share with you some of my favorite outtakes with her I have been waiting for this day let me introduce the beautiful and talented Krista Meeker from Meeker home and DIY I'm always looking for designers who are true artists and really specialize in that old world home decor. But Krista also brings in her own just whimsical touch. She's always antiquing and thrifting and DIYing, but really high quality DIY. And if you love the dark academia style, you're gonna love Krista. She's excellent at curating it. I'm always looking for someone who can actually teach interior design as they're doing it and this is what Krista does so well. She takes the time to slow down and show you the actual styling process and the, you know, the, the whys and the hows and what she would do differently and where to buy things and what the options are and she's just so helpful for just the, the average bear in that way she's really balanced i feel like she's so honest and down to earth and hard working but also extremely visionary and extremely talented her son jameson has an amazing room that she redid if you're looking for kid spaces that aren't cheesy um, that just have this amazing storybook timeless feel that is what she does she does really well with that and the look could go i mean it could go 10 or 20 years or, or more. She really understands how to put a magical room together. She just inspires me. I think she's leading the way in the industry and she's just such a gem. Be sure to take the extra time today and treat yourself to watch her latest video and then follow along. She and her husband are turning their 1932 home in Kansas into perfection. I did notice too she's close to 50,000 followers so let's see if we can help her hit that milestone this week. Okay, the first item we're gonna look at today is a dress form. Um, I see these all the time in antique stores. I paid $40 for it and I've got an idea for how I want to style with a cedar garland and just like a feminine touch and a skirt and anyway. I have an idea, we'll see how 
it goes. Normally I have it styled actually in right here on a stool with my mother's wedding dress. But I originally picked it up for Christmas decorating because I want to make um, it's sort of a, like a feather boa but it's with cedar garland and a falala -la garland and anyway. It, it's cute in my head. Uh, this, this is a crocheted tablecloth. You know, I think you're gonna find that a lot of what I choose isn't necessarily Christmas, and hopefully that's encouraging to you. Maybe you'll see things around your space that, you know, with new eyes, and you can not have to spend so much on Christmas decorating, but I think crocheted tablecloths are gorgeous. I mean, when you look at that, like, don't you just see snow, snowflakes? So I actually have used this in all kinds of different ways already. I love it across the back of a couch. I love it across the foot of a bed and of course as a tablecloth. But I thought that the, I have two of these. I thought that they would make beautiful tree skirts. I don't, I don't buy tree skirts. I just haven't bought tree skirts. I would, I would use, you know, a white sheet or I think that this would be really pretty. Next up is a stocking holder. I don't even, this is the only one I have, but it made me think of my husband. He is my hunter and uh, every time I see elk or deer, that makes me think of him. So I grabbed this for just a few dollars. I may change the color. We'll see how that all comes together. I have a lot of my ideas in my head. I write them, you know, out on many pages of papers for each each room has its own page of ideas and sketches and, and it really helps a lot. It, it actually helps things not get too messy before I am creating the space. But I never know for sure when I'm doing any design, I never know 100% how it's gonna look until it's actually, I'm doing it. And I actually have the 3D aspect of it to really understand how things are gonna work. And so the plans are helpful, but in the end, there's just, there's no substitute for actually designing the space. Okay, then I found this stocking. It's super furry. This is gonna be the dog's, dog's stocking. I think I paid $2 for this. And currently, if you're looking for, for good stockings, I, the, the best priced ones that I felt like looked pretty nice were at Walmart. So if you need to get new stockings. Then I found a whole bunch of Jingle Bells. And I loved how um, aged they looked. That's what drew me to them. I have two different sizes. I've already made some, I made a pillow a year, was it last year? It was, uh, it had a felt poinsettia on it. It was a knockoff of a Pottery Barn pillow. And I put these on as the the berries, not berries, um, the stamen, I guess is what it is. The center part of the poinsettia. And then I made a garland with these. I've tied them on gifts. I think that they are a fun way to just bring in a little vintage Christmas touch. I mean, I might just use the rest of these in a little container or something. Okay, and you know I'm gonna say it always grab transfer wear. Um, I have some green and I have some red. If you've been around, you know that I um, am a little bit, I'm a little bit skittish about using red in my decorating. It's not part of my branding or anything, but I recently heard from Phoebe at the Maple House Collective and she was in a magazine and she said that she likes to incorporate red in her kitchen especially in, during the holidays because it has a very French flair to it and, and add in just a lot of baked goods and things. And I thought, that's really good advice. I'm going to try that this year. We're going to see some red in my kitchen. So grab transfer wear. Beautiful. You can hang these on your wall. You can display these on shelves. And then this is a record. I have a record player. I think the crackly sound and the the sweet, simple tunes, they really take me back and put me in a good mood. I love especially to cook Italian food to record music. That is really fun. And the, my second favorite is Christmas music. So I found this, it's a Firestone record and I kind of think that they gave these out free or something. It's fun because my grandfather owned a Firestone gas station back in the day. And so I could ask 
my father about this. Did they give these out at Firestone gas stations? But this one has Julie Andrews and James McCracken and some fun names on here. So we'll have some, some crackly Christmas music going on. Then I found this rolling pin and I have shared this in the past, but I haven't actually used it in the past. This was at Goodwill. These are fun with the little, to me it looks like a sweater print. And I love the detailing, this pattern on here. I have an idea that I saw, I'm gonna do it in my Handmade Holidays series. That's an email group that follows along with my D DIYs for Christmas. I think that it will be cute to just roll, use this to roll out cookie dough and then take cookie cutters or just even cut out the shape of a, of a mitten and a sweater because I feel like this has that perfect knit Christmas sweatery look to it. And so it's gonna just be an easy texture and then we'll, maybe we'll glaze them and stuff. But I just feel like that's such a perfect way to use these that is so believable. All right, and then I'm always looking for ornaments, um, specifically really, really vintage ornaments. So I got this set, two bucks from Goodwill and they clearly have that vintage glass charm to them. I'm not gonna mess with these. Sometimes I take ornaments and I'll repaint them or I'm making some this year that look like velvet. I'm making some that look like amber glass. But these ones I'm gonna leave alone. I think that they are beautiful the way that they are in this current state. I might add a ribbon, but I love how vintage they look. Okay, you guys hanging in there? I have shared these in the past too. I just got these in Snohomish, but I thought I will show them in the collection because they were just part of a shopping haul. But now I want you to know more of what I'm gonna do with these. These are beeswax, kind of a honeycomb. They're a stamped beeswax, but I just loved the texture and I think it was only a couple dollars for a set of six. And then I have different brass, candlestick holders, different heights, different styles. And I'm specifically gonna use these, because they're so special to me. I'm gonna use them as our advent candles on probably our coffee table. So you can be looking for those. I don't wanna just let them go. You know, you're not gonna let these just burn all night, but it would be good for something, you know, that you're really focusing on in the moment and appreciating them so you're not wasting them. So these are gonna be our advent candles. Okay, and this, uh, I hope, does not gross you out. <laughs> Don't hate me, but I bought these a year ago. <laughs> these are from Ikea, and I bought four of them, and they're gingerbread houses. My point at bringing this up is that at the end of the season, I'm tired. I'm guessing you're pretty tired and kind of wanting to be done with the Christmas decorating, wanting to clean it up, but I want you to dig deep. And I want you to go to Joann's and I want you to go to Walmart or Target or Ikea or, you know, regular places that you normally would shop and check the after season sales because they're really, really good. I mean, 90% off oftentimes. Things are a dollar. They just want them out of there. They don't want to store them. And so you're going to store them. <laughs> and you will find just amazing deals and throw them in that, you know, ninth ninth bin that you have where you know you'll find them again. You don't have to understand what you're gonna do with them yet, but just, um, you're just kind of gleaning all the great deals out there and pre preparing yourself for the following year. So that that's where these came from. So it's beyond um, garage sales and thrift stores. It's also that after the season, just bounty that is out there. Three more things. This is my latest find. I got this. To, no, yesterday. I got this yesterday. It was ten dollars. I don't. Uh, sometimes I'm not happy with the prices at Goodwill these days, but I still thought it was worth it because I love I love a good wreath frame. Okay, I'll probably use some liquid nails because this part came off. But it's a frame that doesn't have a frame. It's glass, and then it just has this little thin strip of metal and you open it up. I just, these are my favorites. Open up like this 
and then put your picture in. They're really pretty, it needs to be cleaned, but I have purchased some really great Christmas art on Etsy this year, and I think I'm gonna put this in. I also think that I want to probably rub and buff this to make it gold, because my other frames are gold. Maybe I'll change this to a uh, velvet ribbon or something. Anyway, I think I can make this. So, so this isn't Christmassy per se, but be collecting things that you also can turn into a Christmassy look. Two more things. These also were end of the season finds. I think I paid a dollar and I got ooh, a lot, maybe eight packages of these silvery little sprigs. They kind of look a little too silvery to me. I, my favorite is a champagne look. That looks so vintage. These are a little tinselly looking. Um, I actually, I have, I bought a whole champagne tinselly Christmas tree and it was an after sale tree. So I've never even, I've never even set it up. So this is my year to use my champagne tree. But if I find that these are too silvery, what I'm gonna do is take some gold spray paint and just lightly dust that, lightly dust them because a champagne metallic color has a little bit of warmth to it. So I think I can create that. And the last item, you knew I was gonna say this too, were green and red books. These are just a no-brainer, these linen vintage books. When you find them, snatch them up. They are beautiful at Christmas. And I think they are beautiful on a shelf. They're beautiful on a coffee table. You can tie a ribbon on them. There's a lot of things you can do. It's just an added little filler that's, that's always gonna be a win. All right, you have been watching me create. If you're in my Handmade Holidays group, you've been watching me thrift. And today you saw lots of little goodies that have been accumulating and now it's time to put it all together. So for the next two weeks, I will be showing my home tour. It'll be kind of a Where's Waldo experience where you get to look for these different things that I've been sharing with you, but then actually understand, oh, that's how she used that. That's how it's gonna look. So I hope that that part actually is extremely educational for you and you really feel like it's all come full circle and you feel like you could do it too. Hopefully you got some ideas from today's video. Thank you so much for watching and let me know in the comments below which items were your favorite, which items you've been finding, anything you want to add to a list. I wanna hear it. I love learning from each of you. And be sure to check out Chris's channel too before you um, move on with your day. Her work is beautiful. The sky's the limit with who she's going to be and how you know large she wants to go with her business. I just think her talent is, is fabulous and she's such a sweetheart.